Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about This Other Eden by Paul Harding. This will be my sixth read from the Booker long list. It's Booker season, baby. It's a fairly short one coming in at around 220 pages. Very poetic in its prose and extremely precise in its execution. This book at times has a kind of non-fictiony sort of factual feel to it, but when you combine that with the very poetic prose, it breathes a kind of unique life into the story. Now, I haven't read any of Paul Harding's other work, so this could just be his style or something very deliberate he's doing for this book. This book is based around themes of home, belonging, love, heredity, cruelty, art and racism. So what's it about? In 1972, formerly enslaved Benjamin Honey and his Irish wife Patience discover an island, Apple Island, just off of the coast of Maine where they can make a life together. More than a century later, the Honey's descendants still remain on the island, along with a very eccentric and diverse group of neighbours. Everyone on Apple Island seems to just scrape by. They try to grow what food they can, they mainly fish, and they do just enough to maintain a basic way of life. Eventually, people on the mainland decide to set up aid for the community on the island, sending them provisions. Missionaries visit the island in order to help out and educate the islanders. And then, eugenics-minded state officials decide to come along because they want to cleanse the island. Doctors visit and go about measuring every inch of the islanders with calipers and rulers as if they were some kind of lab animals. A missionary school teacher is given the job of picking one child to save. So of course he picks the lightest skin boy on the island in order to send him to a wealthy benefactor on the mainland to improve his already existing artistic talent. The rest of the islanders will either succumb to the authorities or decide to cast themselves away in order to search for a new Eden. Now I haven't done too much research on this book but I believe that a lot of it is based on actual events. The island off of the coast of Maine is real and it was actually called Malaga Island and it was home to a mixed race community. At that time a mixed race community living together was a very unique thing and looked down upon from the mainlanders. But as I said I haven't done any research so I have no idea how much the events that take place in this novel are actually true. In my head I imagine that Paul Harding has looked at this island that did exist and the mixed race community and the way it was treated and sort of used that as a springboard to tell this story. The book jumps around a lot and we get a good amount of information on the island, the islanders and we get the perspective of the authorities and their aims and what they're trying to do. And we spend a good section of the book with Ethan, the boy who has been sent away to the mainland to improve his art. Now it could just be my readership of this book, but I feel like Paul Harding has written this in a way that isn't really pushing in one direction or the other. He's just giving us the facts of the event and the details of the things that happened and allowing the events themselves to have an impact upon the reader. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked, I really loved the writing style. As already mentioned, it's got this blend that is both utterly poetic, but also incredibly blunt, precise and stripped back. And I know that sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, but hopefully you'll get what I mean when you read it, I think. I also really enjoyed the structure of this book, small chunks that kind of give us an excellent overview of everything that's taking place. The characters are all painted well and the inhabitants of Apple Island are very diverse and extremely eccentric and I really enjoyed that aspect. An example would be Zachary, a carpenter who spends his time inscribing the word of God onto trees around the island via candlelight. This book is also packed with small idiosyncratic details about the islanders and the island that really brought it to life for me. I was just fascinated by this story and the fact that it's based on truth and something that I simply have never ever heard of before or really read about before yeah, I just, I really enjoyed it because it did feel unique. It's totally heartbreaking what happens to the Islanders and Paul Harding's stylistic choices and structuring actually really worked for me. However, I can totally see his stylistic choices not being for everyone. What didn't I like? Only one thing, but it's a big one. Because of Paul Harding's writing style and stylistic choices, I found myself completely unable to emotionally connect to any of the characters. I was emotionally invested in the story, but yeah, as a reader, I really like, and this is personal to me, but I really like to be able to connect on an emotional level to the characters. And the events that unfold are emotionally impactful. So many times where I just have to stop and think or take a moment and really analyze what was happening. But everything would have been heightened even further if I had just been given more time with the characters, if I'd just been given just a bit more of an ability to access them, 
I don't know, it was all quite factual in the way you are presented with the information. And again, it is clearly a choice and it actually did really work for me. But to really bump this novel up, yeah, I think I would have needed a much stronger connection to the characters. I do have another really small dislike and it's to do with Ethan's section. Now Ethan obviously moves away from the island and we spend a vast amount of time with him. But for me, the interesting things about this book were all based on the island and the islanders. Those were the people I really loved getting to know. I liked sort of being there. And we do need that perspective from Ethan leaving the island. We need to see what it's like for an islander to live on the mainland, their experiences there, and the sort of heartbreak of coming back and all those different things. That did need to happen. But I don't know, for me, I felt like it was just too long a section with Ethan away. But that's a very small dislike. There is just so much I really, really enjoyed about this book. And I think it deserves to be on the long list. This book made me want to go away and do more research, which I will. And yeah, I just think this book's going to stay with me a bit longer than a few of the others I've read from the long list. I don't think this book is for everyone. The approach to style and structure and that sort of lack of connection to the characters might leave a lot of people feeling a little bit cold. But overall, I thought it was beautifully written, sharp and precise, a really interesting story that was heartbreaking and fascinating. I'm going to give this book four stars out of five. I thought it was excellent. So have you read This Other Eden by Paul Harding? If so, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? I want to say thanks so much for watching. I hope you're well and I'll see you all on the next one.